It has been dubbed hell on earth for those incarcerated here. Like, when you are like dead, you cannot eat, you cannot drink. A place commonly known for its ubiquitous torture practices. Indefinite detention without charge or trial is a human rights violation. Lack of appropriate medical care is a human rights violation. Guantanamo is turning 20 years old. 39 out of almost 800 prisoners have been kept there through today, some of them without criminal charges. We are ashamed that everything that made this country one that we could say was a free country, that had equal justice for all, has abandoned all of that. We're here at the infamous Guantanamo Bay Detention Facility in Cuba and I'll be taking you with me to look at the world's most notorious prison. Guantanamo first opened 20 years ago and some of its remaining inmates have been waiting for their trials ever since, often in inhumane conditions. In this video, I'll take you through why Guantanamo still exists and examine whether it can ever really be shut down. But first, let's take a look at how everything began. On September 11th, 2001, the United States was hit by unparalleled terror attacks carried out by Al-Qaeda. The other trade center's down. It's down. It's down. Thousands of people died. The United States and its allies were shaken to the core. The U.S. government was looking for an answer that was equally forceful and clear. Make no mistake. The United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. The answer came soon. The United States and its allies launched a global war on terror. More and more suspects were captured and later sent to the U.S. Navy base at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. A place outside the public eye, far from American soil, where the U.S. Constitution does not exist and nobody is watching. Very soon Guantanamo hit the headlines. Reports of torture came to light and that led to some fundamental and unsettling questions. Was America a longtime fighter for human rights, hiding its terror suspects in a detention facility tucked away on a small bit of land in Cuba so that nobody could see what was really happening here behind barbed wire fences? Was America losing its moral authority? The base is only accessible by plane from the United States. Only the U.S. military can allow visitors to the base. We have to play by their rules, and that means filming is very limited. Guantanamo consists of a Navy base, a military court, and the infamous prison. That part, however, is off limits for our camera, for good reason. Can you summarize from the perspective of Amnesty International, what are the human rights violations that are taking place in Guantanamo? Indefinite detention without charge or trial is a human rights violation. Um, lack of appropriate medical care is a human rights violation. Lack of treatment for torture is a human rights violation. There's so many human rights violations involved in Guantanamo, and, we, and that's why we've opposed it for so many years and think it makes absolutely no sense for the U.S. to keep it open and that it, the Biden administration really needs to take every measure it can to, to shut it down now. The biggest obstacle for us is that everything you see in this video has been recorded under surveillance by the US Army. It's gone through extensive censorship or it's archive footage that was given to us and therefore shows a sugar-coated version of Guantanamo. No picture or video may leave the base without the Army's approval. Plus, we didn't get any access to the detention facilities, so it's hard to find out what's really going on behind these walls. But one man who has spent many years as an inmate can tell us more. Mohamedou Old Slahi, a former resident of Germany, was held in Guantanamo for 14 years. He was suspected as being the head recruiter of the 9-11 attacks, but was never charged with a crime. His book Guantanamo Diaries, now hitting the big screen as the Mauritanian, shows in great detail how he was brutally tortured. He suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder to this day. Like, when you are like dead, 
you cannot eat, you cannot drink, uh, you cannot do anything, and you cannot sleep. Most, mostly, you cannot sleep, and you just like waiting to die. You know, this is like the worst manifestation I I had. I wake up sometimes, just like three, four nights ago, I woke up and I was shaking, so scared, because I saw my uh, my jacket on the door and I thought it was someone coming to get me. And it took me a very long time. Sometimes I wake up, I cannot breathe, you know, but I'm facing this, you know, because like getting your duck in a row is a myth. Nancy Hollander defended Mohamedou at court. Well, Mohamedou was tortured um, more severely than anyone else in Guantanamo, uh, with the possible exception of um, a prisoner named Katani, who's still there. But, you know, if you see the movie, you'll find out that what the movie says and shows is what happened to him. You know, the movie can't show 70 days of not being given more than an hour or two of sleep a night on some nights no sleep, so that he basically began to hallucinate. At the heart of Guantanamo is the military court, the so-called Camp Justice. The majority of the remaining inmates are still waiting for their trials, some of them 20 years after being brought here. Among them are the alleged masterminds of 9-11, like Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Ramzi bin Alshib. Some 13 detainees are cleared to be released, but are still being kept in Guantanamo without any charges at all. We cannot film at court, but we can talk to defense attorney Anthony Natale. His client is the alleged Al-Qaeda terrorist Al-Nashiri, who arrived here in 2006 and has been waiting for his trial ever since. Guantanamo has been seen internationally as a stain on American history. So where does that place here put the United States? We are ashamed that everything that made this country one that we could say was a free country, that had equal justice for all, has abandoned all of that. And that's sad. It's sad. And I, I don't know how we're going to be able to recover. It has become a rallying point to recruit other extremists. It has been uh, something that is thrown in the face of Americans and the American government whenever we want to talk about or criticize human rights anywhere else. I don't see it. And to be quite frank, if there was a reason, they're not telling us and they're not telling the public or the world why did they have to continue this. In the shadow of the detention camp lies another side of Guantanamo. The U.S. naval base has been there for almost 120 years. Residential areas resemble small-town America. This is where soldiers and their families live. Cuba's only McDonald's is here. The contrast to the detention camp couldn't be clearer. This is what the military wants us to show, some normalcy, a Navy base where people go about their everyday lives. To us, it really seems like a world of double standards. You have the notorious prison and the court on the one hand, and the 6,000 inhabitants of Guantanamo on the other. But the prison and what happens there is a forbidden topic for them, and we're not even allowed to talk to people on the streets. But we are allowed to film at Radio Gitmo, the oldest radio station of the Armed Forces Network, the soundtrack for Guantanamo comes from here, and she is Gitmo's voice. All right, all right, Gitmo, hello, hello. Welcome to your morning show with DJ Candles, otherwise known as Petty Officer Annalise Candelaria. It is whew, pretty early in the morning, 8 a.m. here. Court trials and the prison are not part of their coverage. It's not really part of, like, the culture here, you know. That's a, another side of the base. Here on this side, we have a whole different type of operations going here because as you know, um, this is an, uh, an important fueling station. It's an important base overall for the operations of the military in general. The new pride of the base is the school which was just reopened in a new building. This elementary school classroom comes with state-of-the-art technology and allows its students somewhat of a normal childhood, five kilometers from the notorious detention facility. 
but prison and court are not part of the curriculum. We focus on the DODIA curriculum standards. That's our focus. Our mission is to provide the best education uh, that our students should get. For several U.S. presidents, the detention camp was a thorny topic on their agenda. President Obama was the first who wanted to close Guantanamo. I don't want to pass this problem on to the next president, whoever it is. Are we going to let this linger on for another 15 years, another 20 years, another 30 years? Obama failed. President Trump changed course. To re-examine our military detention policy and to keep open the detention facilities in Guantanamo Bay. And the Biden administration has again shifted back. Yes, our goal is to close Guantanamo Bay. Uh, I don't have a timeline for you. Uh, as you know, there's a process. There are different layers of the process. But how long that will take is incredibly unclear. Ultimately, the detention center was built to detain terrorists and war criminals and have them face trial in a military court. Out of around 800 detainees that were held here in Guantanamo, only eight have been convicted and four of those convictions have been overturned. So that leaves us with the question, what is taking so long and can there ever be an end to this? Well, there is a law on the books in the United States that says no one who's ever been in Guantanamo can come to the U.S. for any purpose, trial, medical, etc. cetera. Um, but moving them, just making a Guantanamo North is not the answer to this question. These people need to be released. Uh, we can't hold people for 20 years um, without any charge because uh, according to the US, uh, there's not enough evidence to charge them, but we somehow know they're dangerous. Cliff Sloan was President Obama's envoy for closing Guantanamo. He believes the Biden administration is running out of time. Aspect of this, when you look at it, there are many things that could be done and that need to be done um, by President Biden and the administration. And I don't doubt their commitment and their good faith but the pace needs to be picked up. The, uh, you know, the, the 27 who are not charged with anything need to be transferred to other countries right away. And, and especially with the 13 who are approved for transfer. In the first year of the Biden administration, we've only seen one person transferred from Guantanamo. And that is far, far too slow of a pace. Do you think Guantanamo will ever close down? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I think even the U.S. government will come to realize that having an entire prison camp on their military base in Cuba to hold a handful of men, well, right now 39, but as that number gets smaller and smaller, it will become more and more clear and how irrational it is, how absurd it is. Can it? Absolutely. Will it? God only knows but it certainly can be closed. All of the needs or concerns can be accommodated without having to maintain a, a prison which is riddled with a history of torture and a court system which is flawed beyond repair. It's a shameful anniversary um, for the United States. Uh, Guantanamo is a stain on the United States, but as a result, the answer isn't to either turn the other way or to uh, raise our hands in frustration. The answer is to move forward and close it and end this um, long, unfortunate chapter as promptly as we can. And I hope that this year, the 20th anniversary, is going to be the year that we are finally, finally going to see Guantanamo closed. You know, I thought at the beginning of the um, Obama administration that it was going to happen, it clearly didn't. Um, I thought at the beginning of the Biden administration that it was going to happen, and now I don't see how um, unless he really moves quickly and he is willing to expend the political capital necessary to do that. Um, but, you know, it all comes down to politics. Uh, how far is he willing to go, given the Republicans 
um, who refused to move on any issue whatsoever. And uh, I just don't know. Now I'm beginning to be more pessimistic than I was at the beginning. The debate about the closure of Guantanamo is as old as the detention camp itself. Presidents famously vowed to transfer inmates to the mainland U.S. and famously failed. Twenty years after 9-11, the detention camp at Guantanamo Bay continues to be a stain on America's global reputation and several dozen detainees are still waiting for their trials.